Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing awesome. I hope you are too. Uh, it's Friday. Thank goodness it is Friday today. Tomorrow is Saturday. This week is just clicking along. And I was supposed to go and get my car fixed today, but I just, I don't know. I did not want to go. I did not wake up feeling so great with allergies, and I just did not want to drive to Fort Worth. So anyway, uh, again, I hope you had an awesome day. Um, we're going to talk tonight about nothing ever could separate us. Nothing ever could separate us. And so I shared a song today called Nothing Ever Could Separate Us. And uh, by Citizen Way. Really good song. Um, maybe go and listen. If you didn't get to listen to the video today, then just go and listen to it at your leisure. Okay. Well, first I want to pray, and I'm probably not going to be on here for very long. I'm going to mostly read scripture. I'm going to do this as the salvation message, and then I'm going to get off. I'm kind of tired today. Kind of tired. It's been raining off and on all day, so if I lose electricity, that's what happened. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and pray. God, we just thank you. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you that you are on your throne and that you are in control, God. There is nothing that is hidden from you, God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are the righteous judge, God. But you are magnificent and powerful and mighty. But yet you're loving, kind, and compassionate, forgiving, faithful, and patient, God. <clears throat> Wanting none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray. We pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for them to see where they are and to return to you, to repent of their sins and to let you reconcile that relationship and make it new again. God, we pray for all the people in Florida, God, in this tragedy of this building collapse. We just pray for the families, God. Um, as of today, 20... 20 bodies were recovered and uh, but they found some extra people too that were not in the building so that brought down to the unknown um, 125 God we just pray that you would be with these families God that you would be with these rescuers as they are trying to uh, rescue these people God, we pray for all the government officials, the city, the county, the um, state, the federal God, that are all working together. We just pray that you would help them to continue to do that. And uh, we just pray for more people to be found, God. We also pray for Florida that is in that the hurricane is set to hit sometime this weekend god we just pray that it would hit somewhere else or if it does hit it will not be as tragic as what it looks out on the ocean god we just uh, pray for protection for these people from florida we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones we just pray for peace comfort and strength for them and in jesus name we pray amen all right, well, my throat is very dry. I haven't been drinking enough water. And the, the allergy medicine that I've been taking makes my throat really dry. 
Okay, well let's read what I wrote today on Facebook. My daily reading was this today, Romans 8. I love Romans 8. I do love Romans 8. There's so many things in there, um, in the whole chapter. And then it ends with this, that nothing can separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus. I love this song and message by Citizen Way. <clears throat> and I love what Ben Calhoun says in this video about this song in Romans 8. I know many people feel like their sins separate them from the love of God, but that is not true. God loves us in our sin. He loves us all the same. Our relationship with Him could be closer without our sin because He does hate the sin because He is a holy and perfect God. His love never changes for us. He loves us no matter what, and He knows all the what's because nothing is hidden from Him. God provided an escape from our sin through Jesus. God loves us all and sent Jesus to be the last blood sacrifice required for mankind. Jesus paid it all on the cross for all of us. If you find yourself trapped in sin today, it is okay. Repent, ask for forgiveness, and start new today. Nothing ever could separate us. If Jesus is not your Savior, call upon His name now and be saved. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3:16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that is what I wrote about nothing can ever separate us. But let's read. Let's read about. Let's read Romans 8. All right, let's read all of it because all of it is very good. And I think I read this not too long ago, but I can't help it. I like Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I might have read part of this last night. No, I did sometime. Sorry. All right. Maybe something similar. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So Jesus condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, for to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And so we can't please God. That doesn't mean that He doesn't love us. That means that we can't please Him. We don't have a close relationship with Him when we are walking in the flesh and not in the Spirit. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So God loves, God loves the sinner, but he does not love the sin. And sinners are not part of God's kingdom. You have to have Jesus to be part of God's kingdom. That doesn't mean that he loves sinners that are not saved. That does not mean that. Um, 
in the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. You know, death, sin is death. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are... They are sons of God, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if the children, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the mani manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan um, within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. So our spirits long to be spiritually whole. Like we are not spiritually whole. We have the Holy Spirit to guide us, but we have... Um, we are carnal too because we're human so we have to decide okay are we going to follow the spirit or are we going to follow the world today because it's our choice but we still have the spirit in us but this spirit longs to have um to be in that spiritual body that perfect body that we don't have yet for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercess intercession for us, with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So that is, these are things that the Holy Spirit does for us. He makes intercessions for us. He utters things and groanings that we don't know to say in our prayers. That's what he does for us. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. 
in whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So this is like our theme. Nothing ever could separate us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? And as it, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nothing can separate us from God's love that is in Christ Jesus. Absolutely nothing. But we're going to read more about God's love. Because we're going to read more about the level of God's love. And that is the best example of that is in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so this is 18 through 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. I see a lot of that right now. I see a lot in our society, that people love the darkness more than they love the light. They want to stay in the darkness. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his, de his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, and they are wrought in God. W-R-O-G-H-T. Not, not R-O-T. Not wrought. But they are, they are in God. Okay. So that is how much God loves us. Is that he... He sent his son to die for us, for everyone, not just for us, for everyone in the world. Hey, my friend Josie, how are you doing today? Okay, now I want to read about love in 1 Corinthians 13. Um, Though I speak with the tongues of men, of angels, and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love envies not. Love vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself unseemingly. Does not seek its own. 
is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth, rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So let's think about God's love for us. God's love, it says suffers long. God's love is patient. God loves us patiently. And God is kind. God is kind to us. And God does not envy. And he is not puffed up. And he doesn't behave unseemly because he is a holy, perfect God. And he doesn't seek his own. And he's not easily provoked. And he thinks no evil because there is no part of God that is evil. And so he doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but does rejoice in the truth. And the love of God bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And love will never fail. The love of God will, will never fail. And there is nothing that can separate us from that love. The love is always present. The relationship isn't as close if we're in sin. We need to get rid of our sin. We need to ask for forgiveness and turn away from that sin. But the love is the same. He loves us the same. He doesn't love me because I'm saved more than he loves the people that are unsaved. He loves us all the same. But it's up to us what we do with that love. Do we walk in truth? like he's asking us to do or do we go our own way and suffer the consequences because when we make bad choices they come with bad consequences when we make good choices they come with blessings when we are being obedient when we are doing the things we're walking in righteousness we're never going to be perfect but we need to strive to do what's right i'm not perfect I make mistakes, I ask for forgiveness, and I move on. The enemy wants us to stay in that sin and wallow in that sin even when we've already asked for forgiveness, but we need to move on. God wants us to move on from that. Okay. Oh, that's not what I'm doing. Oh, I didn't mean to throw it. All right. So let's do our salvation message steps of peace with God and this is a goodnewstracks.org step to, steps to peace with God so step one is God's purpose peace and eternal life God loves you and he wants you to live in peace with him and to receive eternal life the Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, John 3, 16. We just got through reading that a while ago. But the gift of God is eternal life. 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 Since God planned for us to be at peace with Him and to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? That's a good question. <laughs> so step two, our problem, sin and separation. God did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey Him. Instead, He gave us a will and freedom of choice. But like Adam, we often choose to disobey God and go our own selfish ways. That's just what I said a while ago. This side of our nature is called sin, and it separates us from God. Our sin separates us from God, not from the love, just from the relationship, from the closeness of the relationship. He loves us. He loves sinners as much as He loves us. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Romans 3.23, 6.23 So after Adam sinned, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3.23 but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah 59, 2. Still, love, still a loving God, but not as close of a relationship as you can have with forgiven sins. So step three, God's remedy, the cross. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. He died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins completely, bridging the gap between us and God. God has provided the only way and we must make the choice. So the Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So he loves us when we were stuck in our sin. He was loving us and he sent Jesus as a way for us to have eternal life. Salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved, Acts 4.12. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus Christ, 1 Timothy 2.5. Very, very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word, Jesus, and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. So step four, our response, receive Christ. We can receive Jesus Christ when we believe in his message and trust in him alone to save us. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 1. The Bible says all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sin through his name, Acts 10.43. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, John 1.12. So, how to receive Christ? Well, number one is admit your need. Say, I am a sinner. Be willing to turn from your sins, which is repent. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. Through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to come in and control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him as your Savior. So this is a prayer, and if you would like to repeat it after me, you can. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am sinful and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin. I want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead. I invite you to come into my heart and life.
In Jesus' name, amen. So God's assurance, his word, if you sincerely prayed this prayer and asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, do you know what he has given you? Oh, I need to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a I'm not a dainty sneezer. Ugh. He has given you your new life. When you receive Christ, you are born into God's family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, who indwells every believer. This is called regeneration or new birth. God bless you as you begin your new life in Christ. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10:13. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We read that tonight. Romans 8:39. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life, 1 John 5, 12 through 13. So if you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Savior, you now have uh, peace with God. So the angels in heaven are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Welcome to the Kingdom Family of God. Alright. So if you want to grow closer with God, it didn't say it in that track, but do read your Bible every day. Start in Matthew and uh, pray every day and find you some praise music that you like there are all different kinds of Christian music okay so I'm gonna read numbers 6 24 through 26 which is a blessing from God the Lord bless thee and keep thee the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace all right, we need some peace. All right, my day was good, Josie. I got some things done here around the house. Um, do you have any prayer requests? I seem to be losing my voice. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and pray. i got to get off of here and get Seth fed. I think Ricky went back to Walnut Springs. I don't know. I heard my door open and shut. I have my office door shut, so I don't know. I did cook dinner. I cooked pork chops and beans and cornbread, and it was so good. Uh, I didn't make the beans myself. I opened cans. <clears throat> They're really good. They're good. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we just thank you and we just praise you, God, because nothing can separate us from your love. You love us so much. Your love is constant and it never ends, God. And I know many people think, well, I'm stuck in this sin. God can't love me. But God, you do love them. You love them even in their sin. You sent Jesus to die for us when we were in our sins, God. God, we know that you you want them to come to Jesus, come into a relationship with Jesus, to be saved through Jesus. No matter what they've done, God, forgiveness can be theirs. God, we just praise you and thank you for this wonderful day today. We've had rain twice today. We thank you for the blessing of rain. And uh, we just pray, God, for Josie and her family, Josie and Austin and her family, God, 
that you would give them protection and provision and blessings. We pray for her sisters and their families and her brothers and their families and for her children and their families, God. We just pray that you would give them protection and bless them and provide for them, God. We pray for Mr. Mike and the boys, God. We just pray for guidance and wisdom. We just pray that you would also bless and protect and provide for them. And just uh, We just pray that you would uh, extend your traveling mercies to all the people that are traveling this weekend, God. For this holiday, we just pray that this holiday would just be so good for families, for friends to get together and celebrate our freedom, God. God, you give us freedom too. You give us freedom to choose every day, either to follow Jesus or to follow the way of the world. And our blessings come with following Jesus. So God, just keep us on this straight and narrow path with Jesus. Help us to stay right behind him so that he can show us the way back to you. And God, we just thank you and praise you for all things. We pray again for the people in Florida. God, just please be with them. Let them feel your presence, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, all right, my friends, I have a bit of a headache all of a sudden. I don't know. I've had some allergy issues for a couple of days, and the other night I had such pressure just on one side of my face, and I kind of feel like that's coming back. So I'm going to go take me some allergy medicine because I'm not locked into the 24-hour stuff. I'm going to go take me some allergy medicine and uh, take care of Seth's dinner. <clears throat> so have an awesome rest of your night and have an awesome tomorrow. And I think I will be here tomorrow night. Um, I'm not quite sure. Not sure if I'm going to be here on the 4th of July because everybody will be doing family stuff. So I don't know. My calendar here is still on June. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But thank you for coming tonight. God bless all, all of you and your families abundantly. Much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.